Hi class, I just wanted to make a quick video now that I've gotten through all of uh, the positive phrases. Um, there's a little bit of confusion about what exactly to do and I think the most common error were that people were making comma splices. So this is known as uh, the sentence combining uh, theory. There's a husband and wife that wrote a bunch of textbooks that believe their name was Kilgallen. And I think William Strong was another one. But anyway, so the idea is you are combining sentences to, well, as I say here. So the idea here is to use the sentence combining technique to develop a sentence structure for the activity. So in this case, we are working on creating sentences with the positive phrases. Um, and the other one you guys did was participle phrases. Um, and then there was ones working on how to make compound constructions with semicolons and colons, so on and so forth. So this is an example from the assignment group three. We have Mike is a hard, Mark, Mike is a hardworking and talented artist. Mike recently won a major regional prize. It was one that carried a cash reward. So these are three complete sentences, right? So if you, just let me show you here. If you have these sentences together, like so, the writing would sound really choppy, right? Mike is a hardworking and talented artist. Mike recently won a major regional prize. It was one that carried a cash reward. Sounds robotic. Um, sounds something that maybe like a first grader or, well, maybe not a first grader, a second or third grader would um, write. So the idea here is to combine these three sentences and use the particular sentence technique that we are working on. And as I said a minute ago, um, we are working on the positive phrases. So let's take a look at, here's probably the most common error that I saw. So let's take a look at this one. Mike, comma, a hardworking and talented artist, comma. Now that's good, right? That is in a positive phrase, right? So this is one of those subject verb splits. The subject is Mike, the verb is recently, right? So Mike, a hardworking and talented artist, recently won a major regional prize, comma, it was one that carried a cash reward. Now, it was one that carried a cash reward is a complete sentence. Mike, a hardworking and talented artist, recently won a major regional prize is a complete sentence. So we have two, two complete sentences joined with the comma, right? But we are trying to make one sentence. So in these groups where you have more than two sentences, three or four, you have to figure out which one you're going to keep. Um... So I think this is probably the one that we would keep. This one here. Uh, and the other two we're going to turn into phrases. So remember, in a positive phrase usually ends in a, an, or the. So you want to get rid of the subject and verb. So I'm crossing out the subject and verb. So now we have two positive phrases. And how can we do this? Well, we can... So if we take a look at the first one, a hardworking and talented artist, we know that that's referring to Mike. So we could begin the sentence with this a positive phrase. A hardworking and talented artist comma, Mike recently won a major regional prize, comma, not it was one that carried a cash reward, but one that carried a cash reward. Remember, it's a phrase. We can't have a complete sentence. So this is a more a sophisticated sentence, right? It's got a, what we would call as a, a kernel sentence, right? And we have two phrases that are attached to it. We have an appositive phrase here, and we have an appositive phrase here. So this is one of the exceptions where the appositive phrase doesn't begin with a or the. Now, this isn't the only way you could do it, as we saw in this example up here. 
right? You can begin the sentence with Mike and you can stop and say, well, I, I want to add a little bit of information about Mike, right? Subject verb split. So you, you separate the subject and the verb recently, right? With the comma, and then you just continue on. Okay, now for the imitation, you you look at the um, the same structure, right? It could be this one or this one. Well, since I already my first revision was I began the sentence with an positive, so we have an positive phrase. Uh, so we can put a lazy and. untalented musician so see I begin with a positive phrase here I begin with a positive phrase here now we need our subject um, I'm just gonna make up somebody I don't want to offend anybody here but who do I think is lazy um, I don't know how to spell her name but I can't stand this person Kesha I think it's something like that is that how you spell her name Kesha um, So Kesha, I think she changed her name, right? Recently, she. But we got to make it sense. A lazy and untalented musician. Kesha relies on. I'm just making this up. Others to write her songs. Now the uh, right so the one that carried a cash reward, uh, the positive, right, is describing prize. So we should probably put in a positive here that's going to um, describe songs. Um, a lazy and untalented mu musician, Kesha relies on others to write her songs. Um, but we can't use the those. We'll just put the ones that have good beats but weak uh, poetic quality <laughs> I don't know you get the idea but the see but the thing is though this the structure of this sentence right we have a positive phrase here we have a positive phrase here we have our complete sentence here we have our complete sentence here, and we end with the appositive phrase, just like there, just like here. That's what the imitation is. So anyway, um, overall, though, there were some really good sentences. Um, I gave most of you some feedback, and everybody gets full credit. I just, you know, it was just what I would call a low-stakes assignment where you, you know, get a chance to kind of work with these different sentence structures without the fear of losing points or anything like that. So... Thanks for listening.